like, subscribe, and leave a comment. So, this is a rant. I think I needed to do a rant. I think I needed to do a rant today just to go over a few things. There's been a lot happening recently in the mixed martial arts world, mostly UFC 300. Um, and there's things I want to cover, WWE, <coughs> AW, and also boxing. So, like, subscribe, and leave a comment. So, this is a rant. Um, uh, so, let me know how you feel about these rants. If you like these rants, and let me know. I'll do more of them. So, I thought I'd just do something different today. Got a, free, a, a bit of free time on my hands. Um, I thought I'd speak to you a lot. I appreciate you a lot, uh, for sure. This is our community here. So, let's talk about UFC 300. So, there's been a lot spoke about 300 in about what the main event's going to be for UFC 300. There's been a lot of talk about it. So, a, pe a lot of people are knocking the card. <laughs> it's just it's quite funny when um, it was announced that Kayla Harrison is going to face um, Holly Holm. And then when it was announced, if you look in the comments when it was announced on Dana White's social media. Shout out to Dana White. Um, it, there's a lot of hate on there. There's people going sleeping emojis and toilet break emojis, <laughs> things like that. I think it's a bit harsh because I think it is a really good fight. I'm looking forward to that one for sure. It's going to be a really good fight. I'm looking forward to that. Um, and then you've got the rest of the card. So you've got Whaley Zhang. So if you look at the card, the card, I think the card's a solid card. I think it's a solid, solid card and I think it's worth your money. Whaley Zhang versus... Um, Jan, I'm just going to call her Jan because I don't want to, I forgot, I don't want to keep butchering names. That's a solid fight. If you remember Jan's last fight, she teach, she got the TKO knockout. I think that was in her last fight. She looks, she's dangerous, yeah? Then you got Justin Gagey versus Max Holloway. That's a decent fight as well. That is a barn burner of a fight. I think that's a barn burner. It's not the fight that people are thinking about or asking for. It's probably like the fight we didn't know we needed. And the fight hasn't happened yet. So we can't judge a fight before it's even happened. So let's 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 see how it goes. Plus, Max Holloway said he's going to prepare properly this time. Last time he when he fought um, Dustin Poirier at 155, he said he was just a blown up 45er. He said this time he's coming in properly at 155er. So it probably means he's going to put on more more muscle, more weight, and then cut down to the actual weight limit instead of he probably was 145 and he ate a bit and got to 155 and then fought Poirier. So there's there's that. Charles Oliveira versus Armin. Charles Oliveira in 2023, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, he was the pay-per-view draw. He was one of the, he was, his pay-per-views were the most bought pay-per-views. So he's a pay-per-view draw and whatever he goes on. And I like this fight as well. I would have preferred Charles versus Islam, obviously, like everybody else would. But um, I think Islam, I think he's injured. I think, I'm not sure. Correct me if I'm wrong if he's not, my bad. Then we got Yuri versus Rakit. That's a solid fight. That's a solid fight. Um, Calvin Cater versus Al Jermaine Sterling. That's a common, that's a solid fight. Um, Al Jermaine Sterling doesn't get enough love. And I don't hear enough people. Is it just me and Sugar Sean that say this? That Al Jermaine Sterling is the greatest bantamweight in the UFC of all time. He has the most title defenses in the UFC at bantamweight. So, and the same thing said about Stipe. People call Stipe the greatest heavyweight in the UFC history because he's got three title defences. Well, we should be saying the same thing about Aljamain Sterling. He has three title defences in the bantamweight division. He should be called the greatest bantamweight of all time, but no one ever says that. So I think we need to start saying that, and I'm going to be, I'm going to be always saying it until somebody breaks that record. Bo Nickel versus Cody uh, Brundage. Bo Nickel, you know, he's a he's an upcoming prospect. He gets a lot of coverage, so that's a good. I always like to see Bo Nickel fight, see where he's at, see what's improved on. Davison Figueredo versus Cody Garbrandt. That can be a main event anywhere. That could be a main event for a vacant title. That could be a main event on a fight night. That is a big fight. That's a barn burner. Holly Holm versus Kayla Harrison. I, I like the fight. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like when new people come in that's got hype behind them. And let's see how they do in the UFC. I like the fight. I like it. I like. Let's see what happens there. It might be a wrestling heavy match. We'll see. Or will Holly Holm be on her bike? Uh, pep, like hit, hit and move, stick and move and keep it moving. We will see. I'm looking forward to it. Um, Sadiq versus Diego Lopez. That's going to be a barn burner. Jessica Andras versus Mar Marina. That's a barn burner for the women. And then Bobby Green versus Jim Miller. That's a that's a bomb, Bernard. This apparently that fight was booked quite a few times and never happened, but it's got, it looks like it's going to happen at three hundred. 
Um, Jim Miller's been on 100, 200. It can be on 300. This is a barn burner. I think this card is absolutely solid. I think it's a solid card. I think we need to give a bit more praise to this card. Um, but there's a lot of heat and a lot of people talking about UFC 299. So we look at UFC 299. It is a, it is a solid card as well. So, uh, Sean O'Malley versus Vera. Barn burner. Dustin Poirier versus um, uh, Saint, Saint, Saint Benoit, Saint Denis. I've got it out there in the end. That's a barn burner. But apparently there's something going on with that fight. As of today, I'm telling you this right now, as of the 2nd of February, which I'm doing this video, um, apparently Dustin Poirier said the fight's off. So I don't know what's happening, but apparently it's still on, as far as I know. I don't I don't know what's going on. Then we've got Kevin Holland versus Michael Venom Page. That's a barn burner. Then we've got um, Gilbert Burns versus Jack, Mandel Jack Mandelena. Mandelena. Yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a sick fight. And then Pete Yarn versus uh, Song. That's a, that's a sick fight. Um, the prelims are tasty as well. Kurtz Play versus Almeida. Dang. Uh, that could be a main event anywhere. That could be a main event. Main event for a fight night. Probably not a pay-per-view, but main event. Oh, if we need to, we need to for a vacant title. Can, it can be done. Um, Kagan Shakukian uh, versus Mace, Macy Barber. That's a really good fight. I like that one. Uh, Gamma versus RDA. Yeah, definitely. Pedro, yeah. Even Michael Pereira's on there. De uh, Mikel, M Mikel Pereira. There's some good fights in 299. I, and the thing is, 300 is not done, though. We're judging it. It's not done. Um, that's a solid fight. If I if I was booking UFC, I think I would put the Kevin Holland versus Michael Venom Page fight on 300. I think that's a 300 fight, personally. But the UFC know what they're doing. So if we're talking about 300, let's talk about the possibilities on 300, what the main event can be. So far as I know, just looking at Wikipedia, the last fight we have um, before the co-main or main event is um, Jan versus... Whaley Zhang. So that's that's that looks to be one of the main fights or feature fight. <clears throat> what people are people uh, online are expecting something out of the blue. They're expecting something left field. They're expecting a Brock Lesnar. They're expecting a Ronda Rousey. Those two things, and I doubt that's gonna happen. I really doubt Brock Lesnar or Ronda Rousey is gonna happen. I really doubt it. I could be wrong, but I doubt that's gonna happen. Brock Lesnar for one is suspended. Um, so that's that's not going to happen. That error, we have to what we have to do is stop forget. We just need to start forgetting about the error of one hundred and two hundred. This is the this is a new error. This is a three hundred error. The one hundred two hundred error. Obviously, one hundred had Brock Lesnar versus Frank Mir and um, George Saint Pierre versus Chago Alvarez. That was blockbuster. But we don't have those. We don't have GSP, as far as I know, and we don't have Brock Lesnar anymore. So we need to stop thinking about Brock Lesnar and stop thinking about. Uh, George St. Pierre being on 300. We need to start, we need to look at what's, what we're playing with these days. Um, 200, uh, it was meant to be three title fights. Well, four. Well, three title fights, yeah, because we had Frankie Edgar versus Jose Aldo. We had um, Misha Tate versus Amanda Nunes. It was meant to be, obviously, John Jones versus DC, but it didn't happen. And it was, they, and so they did DC versus Anderson Silva. That was meant to be five rounds, but Anderson Silva only wanted to do three. So that was meant to be three title fights. So we're looking for, we should be having another title fight on 300. Now, if I'm working in the war room with Dana White, uh, them, them cool guys, who, what would I do? So this is just my thought on it. For 300, Working on what we have now, okay, on what we have now, I would try to put two more title fights on there because we want to. This is three hundred. We want to try and push it over the edge. We want to try and outdo two hundred. We want to outdo three hundred, okay. So I'll be putting two more fights on there. I think there's eleven or twelve fights on there now. I think we can put two more on there. I'd be looking to put Izzy, so Idra Adesanya versus Drykus. That's what I'll be looking for. If we can't do that and Izzy's not ready. You could do a rematch. You could do Drykus versus Strickland rematch. Okay. Um, I think that probably, if Drykus versus Strickland probably couldn't main event it. Or it could do. It could main event, I suppose. Also, you can look left field. We could do a, I, I keep hearing this one as well. We could do Alex Piera versus Tom Aspinall. 
Now, at Piera wants the third title. He wants the third third title. We could do that. But I think he said it's not going to be enough time for him to put the, the weight on. And I think he wants to stick with, stick with light heavyweight. We could do Piera versus Ankalav. There's another one. Um, I don't I don't know if Jamal Hill is ready. If not, if Jamal Hill is ready, definitely go with Jamal Hill versus uh, Piera. 100% go with that. But if he's not ready, then there's some other options. But obviously, there's the big one. Conor McGregor versus... Um, Michael Chandler That's what we want And I know Because um, I listen to Chell as well Chell Chell He's I listen to his podcast He's awesome I listen to Chell Shout out to Chell Sonnen When Chell calls something It usually happens He called the Max Holloway Versus Justin Gagey And it happened Obviously I think he's got Some inside sources somewhere Because he's works, He works there um, But I think he's got A good enough source To be able to be Very confident To stick with it and keep pushing that narrative and he was correct so um he he dropped some really good ones but i i think you can do michael chandler versus conor mcgregor not for a title five round i think you can do that conor mcgregor's a big enough star to do that you can still do that i think you can do that match i don't think there'll be any issues you can do that for a main event i know obviously it's, it's, it should be it should be a title fight that's fine but I think you can do that for a main event with no title. You can do when the Conor fights is it's a big it's a big deal. I don't think any fight can go above that. I think that will have to be the main event. That will will have to be. And I think the fans and everybody will understand is Conor's the main event. You have to do Conor. You have to do Conor the main event. I don't think you can do anything else. So, and like I said, we have to. That my thought would be if I'm booking three hundred would be how do I top two hundred? How do I top one hundred? Because I know the pay-per-view buys that were out there for 100 was 1 1.6 million, okay? And the pay-per-view buys for 200 was 1 million point zero zero nine, something like that. So we need to push it over. If I'm, if I'm working in a company, I'm going to try and get as much money and much eyeballs and much pay-per-view buys as I can on the pay-per-view. So this needs to be a big pay-per-view. You need to hit, hit it out the park. So if Connor is not on there, you're going to do, I would say, Drykers versus Strickland rematch or Drykers versus Izzy. And another title fight. I'd probably say do Aspinall versus Piera. If you can't do that, you could do Piera versus Ankalav. If Jamal Hill's ready, Jamal Hill versus um, Piera. That's probably what I would do. But those fights, I think the 300 card is solid. I think it's really solid. I don't think anyone can really hate on the, hate on the card. I, I like it. I think it's a solid fight. I'll be paying for it and I'll be watching it. Um, and as Dana White said, you can't, you can't say a card's bad until you've watched the card. Like some of these fight nights we see with no names on it, well, there's no, every, there's all, everyone's got a name, but the fight nights we see with no star power on it, sometimes they're the best cards, they're the, they have the best fights, the best KOs. So I will be watching it from start to finish, but I'm looking forward to the 300 card. I think you all should be looking forward to it too. So that's my 300 rant and 299 rant. Let's see what happens. Obviously, it's not going to be John Jones is injured. Steve Pay said he's going to fight John Jones, so that's not going to happen at 300. So they're, they're my thoughts on 300. The only other things I'm going to throw out there, you could do Nate Diaz versus Conor McGregor. That would be a big fight. That would be a big. Or what about Conor McGregor versus George Masvidal? I heard he's out of retirement. Or the last one I will say is a rematch. Uh, you could do Nate Diaz versus George Masvidal. So there you go. I've given you quite a lot there. So if I was the UFC, if you know someone in the UFC term to watch this video, I gave you a lot of options there, but I'm sure they know what they're doing anyway. They put in a great job. I will be watching. I support the UFC. UFC is the only sort of mixed martial arts I watch. Um, so yeah, I'll be watching that for sure. So that's my UFC rant about 300 and 200. So they're the possibilities. Let's talk about WWE. Okay, so let's talk about WWE. Obviously, Cody Rhodes. Wow! So Cody Rhodes has won the Royal Rumble, but there's a lot of uh, wrenches that's been thrown in. So Cody Rhodes has won, CM Punk is injured, Seth Rollins is injured. It's just, <laughs> it's, it's, it's really sabotaged the card a bit. But Seth Rollins is saying he can still probably wrestle at WrestleMania, but his knee is not good. But is that really a good thing to do? If his knee needs surgery, if he wrestles at WrestleMania, is it going to make the injury worse? Unless he can get that resolved by the time WrestleMania comes around, you keep him on the shelf, get him rehabbed. He might need some, I don't know, uh, some shots in his knee. 
uh, that can probably get through the, get through the match. Maybe or put a brace on it. Only problem is what I'm thinking is if he faces anybody at WrestleMania, it may not be the best performance. He may not have the best performance as we we get from Seth Rollins. For Seth Rollins, I did my top five um, WWE wrestlers for the men's. Go and watch it. It's in the videos below. I also did, if you want to go and watch it, the top five the top five UFC male fighters. I've also done the top five women fighters as well. Go and watch it as well. As well, I've done the top five women uh, WWE wrestlers. Go and watch it. Top five male and female AEW wrestlers. So go and watch it. I've done the videos and I was going to watch it. But anyway, it may not really, if you look at it, Seth Rollins has been the most consistent wrestler at a top level, championships level, level in the WWE. Now, I did put Roman Reigns as number one, but the unofficial number one is Seth Rollins. But I couldn't put him, because this Roman Reigns is, is not lost recently. He's, he's holding the title for so long. He had two titles. It's just like, how do you put him as number two? But Seth Rollins is the unofficial number one, is what I'll say. But anyway, but if he fights, if he wrestles um, Cody or anybody at WrestleMania, how good would the match be? Will the match be up to his usual standard, top tier standard? Will he suffer a worse injury in the actual match? These are things he needs to think about. But hopefully he can he can sort his knee out and by the time it comes around, he can wrestle. So we will see what happens. CM Punk is injured as well. I heard somewhere his injury might not be that bad. He might still be able to wrestle at WrestleMania. So we will see. So this is what I would suggest. So wrestle so I'm, I'm helping out UFC. Like I said, send this, send this video to UFC. You're welcome. You can send this video to WWE as well because this is what I would do. So, Cody Rose has won the Rus run, uh, Royal Rumble. I think we should do Cody Rose versus Seth Rollins. That's what I think we should do. And we should do Roman Reigns if he's healthy versus CM Punk. That's what we need to do in the main event of WrestleMania. So, give CM Punk his main event goes against Roman Reigns. And what should happen is CM Punk should, unfortunately, I like CM Punk. I like CM Punk. I like Roman Reigns. But if you're doing it from a business plan standpoint, you're probably going to let CM Punk lose the match to Roman Reigns because you still want to do Roman Reigns versus The Rock. Now, The Rock said he won't do the match against Roman Reigns because he needs a better build-up. He only dropped in, said he wants to sit at the head of the table, not a stool, not a couch, not in a car like me. Not in a, not anyone anywhere else. Not in an aeroplane. He wants to sit at the head of the table, and that's it. And then he's, we ain't seen him since. But he needs more of a build up, like it was him and Zena. You do a year build up, and then they have the match. That's what I think needs to happen with him and Roman Reigns. We're now in fe February the second. Uh, the match is two months ago. I don't think it's enough time to build up a Rock versus Roman. So I don't think it's going to happen. And that Rock versus Roman match needs to be for Roman's title. So we can't really take the title of Roman. I don't know. Tell me if I'm wrong. Please leave, leave a comment. Tell me if I'm wrong. But I don't know if you can take the title off Roman right now because that might lose fire and steam and prestige of the match between him and The Rock. So I think you need to keep The Rock. Off. Unfor well, fortunately, unfortunately, depends what, what you do, how you, how you feel about it. But we're going to need to keep the, the title on Roman. Let Roman win at, Ro at WrestleMania and then let him face The Rock the year after. Whatever happens there, I don't know, but that's what that's the match that needs to happen. But the problem is, is how do we get CM Punk there if he's injured? So I've thought about this. So what you'd do is this. You have the Elimination Chamber match. <laughs> you have somebody win the Elimination Chamber match who can take a hit, who can take a fall. A wrestler who can take a fall, so he can win the, he can win the, uh, the match, and then he can go to, he can... Loses number one contendership to CM Punk. Or he turned it into a triple threat match. So I'm not sure what wrestler who it would be, but it'd be a wrestler that we wouldn't think, like, oh, my, oh, he won it. Really? Then he loses to CM Punk on, like, SmackDown or Raw. And then CM Punk goes against Ro um, Roman Reigns in the main event of WrestleMania. CM Punk calls him out, let's have a match for your number one contendership. And they have it, and then he takes the number one contendership off him. That's how I think it should go. Or you do a triple threat match. With Cody Rhodes, let him face Seth Rollins. Because he's won the Royal Rumble. He won it last year. It's his time now. Give him the title. And it's, it's, this is perfect for Seth Rollins. Because Seth, Seth Rollins can give the title over to um, Cody Rhodes. And then he can get surgery and do everything he needs to do. Properly rehab. While Cody carry, carries the company. But there is an issue. The issue is... Damien Priest. 
Yeah, I haven't forgot anything. I watch everything. I watch with detail. Damien Priest obviously needs to use his money in the bank contract. So this is what I suggest. Uh, spoiler alert. I'm probably going to spoil WrestleMania's plans, but um, I would say Damien Priest should cash in. I'd say Cody Rhodes beats Seth. Then Damien Priest cashes in on Cody Rhodes. See how it goes was Damien Priest as champion. If it doesn't go too well, I'm talking about analytics. I'm talking about pay-per-view buy rates. Uh, well, premium live, premium live event buy rates, um, ticket sales, merchandise, viewer rate, viewership when it's on screen. If that doesn't hit all the quotas they need to, then Cody takes the title back. Let's let it down the line in a couple of months, give it back to Cody. That's my. That's what I said to do. Now, with the women's, um, obviously, you've got Bailey, who's win the Royal Rumble. Who do you put her against? Her against Rhea Ripley doesn't really make much sense. There's, there's no heat there. There's no story there. There's no heat there. You're coming off cold heat to have that match. So I would do Bailey against EO Sky. There's some kind of tension starts or something happens. And then you do Bailey against EO Sky. Like in the, on the day of SmackDown, them two fall out or something happens. Then you do Bailey versus EO Sky. That's what I would do. There's no connection. There's not enough heat between Bailey and Rhea Ripley. It just doesn't connect for me. Um, Rhea Ripley needs to face Nia Jax. That's what I think they should face, to face Rhea, Rhea, Rhea Ripley. Or in a triple threat match, Nia Jax, Becky Lynch, and uh, Rhea Ripley. That's what I think should happen. But question to everybody, where is Charlotte Flair? I haven't seen her for a while. So I don't know if she's injured or not, but yeah. I don't know what she's doing, but she should be in the mix somewhere because she's a top tier um, competitor. Um, so what else is there? So that's my WWE rant. So that's what I think on what you should do for WrestleMania and Elimination Chamber. And my last thing I'll talk about, and my last couple ones will be AEW. So obviously Joe is now the champion. So Joe is the champion. What you do with Joe? I think you do Swerve Str Strickland versus Hangman. Swerve Strickland has beaten Hangman twice already. Okay. So you do them two. And then what will happen is I think Hangman should beat Swerve. And then he should go and face Joe. He should have quite a few matches against Joe. And then do Joe versus someone else after that. Kenny Omega if he comes back. Joe versus Wardlow. Joe versus Adam Cole. Do a few different match. Keep the title on Joe. Don't let Swerve face Joe until all in. In the UK. So I can be there ringside to watch it. And then have Swerve Strickland win the title. That's what I think you should do. Let me know if I'm wrong. I think I'm right. I think I'm right. Give Swerve Strickland the biggest stage as possible. He's been doing all the work. He's done all the groundwork. He's got himself here. Let him get him the biggest win on the biggest stage in Wembley Arena. I'll be there. I'm looking to be there to watch it too. So if you're watching AEW, you're going to be there. I'll be there to watch it too. So I'm looking to be there. So come and see me. Bitman TV. Put your sign up. Everything. Let, put one up saying like, subscribe, and leave a comment. <laughs> if I see any like, subscribe, and leave a comment, um, any like signs, I know that's from, I know that's us. That's our channel. Okay, so that's my thought on AEW. What needs to happen there? Now let's talk up a bit about boxing. Obviously, you got Tyson Fury versus Usyk coming up. I think that's the seventeenth of February. I'm going to be watching that live. Um, I will do a review on that as well. Um, you'll get that, and I will do a review after the fight. So that's going to be a great fight. I'm looking forward to that. Let's see how motivated Tyson Fury is. Obviously, I think he's got something to prove off after that uh, uh, Nganu fight. A lot of people think he lost that fight. The judges said he win. A lot of people think he lost. So he needs to go in there and he needs to look, have, have a good showing. Usyk is a bad dude, though. Usyk is a bad dude. So it's going to be a very, really interesting fight. I'm going to be watching that. I will give you the breakdown. I'll give you the review after watching it. I'm trying to do round for round for you and I'll let you know. Um, and then obviously the winner is going to face the winner of Francis Ngannou versus Anthony Joshua. That's going to be a bomb burn. I'm looking forward to that fight too. Um, that's going to be a crazy fight. I'm very, I'm looking forward to that one. Who wins that one? Well, I don't know. I don't know. I like both fighters. You're going to lean towards the boxer. You just have to lean towards the boxer. I'm not saying he, I'm not saying he's going to win. I'm just saying if probably I don't know if the DraftKings or the betting sites how who they said is going to win, but you're probably going to lean towards the boxer. You're probably going to. But Francis Ngannou is something else. He wanted to be a boxer originally, so he's got all the tools to get this done. So it's going to be a great fight. I'm going to be watching those two. Obviously, I've done a video in that. Go and watch it uh, as well. I've done a little um, review of that, so go and watch it. 
but I'm going to do a, um, a review of after the fight, post fight of that as well. So yeah, so that's my rant, I think. I think I've covered everything. And obviously, the winner of them two fights, Usyk versus Fury and Nganu versus uh, Joshua will face off later on in the year. So let's see. So like, subscribe and leave a comment. Leave your thoughts. What do you think? What do you think to my rant? Do you want to see more of these rants? Let me know. Um, like I say, if you're in a WWE or AW event, put up like, subscribe and leave a comment. <laughs> that would be us, Bitman TV. But yeah, that's me. I'm out. I thought I'd just talk to you a lot. Uh, just see how you lot are doing. And like I said, I'm doing this on February the 2nd. So right now, we do not have a UFC 300 main event. And Dustin Poirier is talking about not fighting in the co-main event of 299. But as far as I know, he's still, he's still fighting. So let's see what happens. But like, subscribe, leave a comment.